Black Girls Podcast, a weekly conversation about mental health, personal development, and all the small decisions we can make to become the best possible versions of ourselves. I'm your host, Dr. Joy Harden Bradford, a licensed psychologist in Atlanta, Georgia. For more information or to find a therapist in your area, visit our website at therapyforblackgirls.com. While I hope you love listening to and learning from the podcast, it is not meant to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for joining me for session 260 of the Therapy for Black Girls podcast. We'll get right into our conversation after a word from our sponsors. AT&T Dreamin' Black wants to celebrate you, the changemakers, innovators, and visionaries uplifting their communities. If that's you, you do not want to miss the chance to power even greater possibilities. Enter the AT&T Black Future Makers Contest for a chance to win $10,000 and an AT&T 5G-enabled device. You got this. Learn more at attdreaminblack.com slash contest. Must be 18 and older. Other restrictions apply. As the seasons change, your skincare and makeup routine might as well. If you're putting together your summer looks, Macy's has got you covered with online guides and tips to help you create a routine that's summer-ready and sun-safe. Perhaps you're looking for a new lightweight moisturizer or maybe even a new summer fragrance. They've got everything you need to build a routine that is catered to you. Discover even more ways to make your beauty shopping a breeze at Macy's.com slash beauty. iHeartRadio and Salesforce.org have teamed up for a second season of their award-winning podcast, Force Multiplier. What if we could change the world one relationship at a time? Listen in as host Veritende Thurston discusses new ways of collaborating to maximize our impact and solve some of today's biggest problems. Join us and hear from the doers out there, the people and organizations that are working together to tackle everything from climate change to education access to global health. Listen to Force Multiplier on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Similar to our other methods of communication, dating has also gone digital. And whether we like it or not, This new space requires some new skills like picking a great profile picture and crafting a short but impactful bio. So how can Black women use dating apps successfully? This week, I'm joined by OkCupid dating expert and host of the popular Dates and Mates podcast, Damona Hoffman. During our conversation, we chatted about the steps you can take to optimize your dating profile to find quality matches, how to assess what you want in a romantic partner, and how dating apps can be used to find the kind of romance you desire. If something resonates with you while enjoying our conversation, please share it with us on social media using the hashtag TBG in session. Or join us over in the sister circles to talk more in depth about the episode. You can join us at community.therapyforblackgirls.com. Here's our conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today, Demona. Thank you for having me, Dr. Joy. Very excited to chat with you. So I'd love for you to begin by just talking with us about how and why you became a dating coach. Oh, quite by accident, of (laughs) course. I I was actually working in television. I was a casting director and I found that there were a lot of actors who were super talented, but just did not know what to do to get noticed by someone like me, by a casting director. Like we would get literally stacks of hundreds of hundreds of pictures every day that we had to sort through and we couldn't call everybody in. And so I started teaching classes for actors and how to have pictures that really stood out and that told their story and how to get noticed and then how to put their best foot forward when they went to the audition room. And let me tell you something, Dr. Joy, I was also dating at the time and online dating was pretty new. I just started online dating and I realized the similarities between what I would tell actors about how to get noticed and by the right people and what I needed to do to get noticed by the right kind of men. So I ended up applying those techniques. I was teaching actors to my online dating experience. I met my husband online. We just celebrated our 15th anniversary. And I realized that there was something to this technique that I had applied myself 
first date is basically an audition and <laughs> a dating profile photo is basically a headshot. And so people started coming to me after I met my husband and asking for my tips. And initially it was just helping family, helping friends. And then through word of mouth, it spread. And I realized I really had something and started doing this full time, became certified as a life coach and then specifically as a dating coach. And now for over 10 years, this has been my life's work. Wow. I love that. And that background is so cool, right? I mean, it feels like it was a very seamless transition in terms of what you are already doing to bringing that to people to help them date better. It does seem that way, doesn't it? When I tell the story now, but let me tell you, girl, there were a lot of like ups and downs along that process. But really through all of my clients, I learn every time I work with someone and every time I, you know, I really study this stuff. Like people think that dating should just be magical and it should just be easy and it should fall in your lap. And I would love to believe that, but I think our lives are just more complicated now. And when we look at the way that we used to date and we used to connect, like most people ended up marrying someone within there was a study from the 1920s where it was like within five blocks of your house. <laughs> That's not a huge dating pool. So like if your mama didn't know him, if he didn't go to your church, if you didn't go to school with him, you weren't meeting him. So I see dating apps as creating a huge opportunity for expanding your dating pool. But with that comes a new skill set that we have to learn. And so I look at dating as a set of skills that we assume should just... <laughs> come to us naturally. But actually, I've seen over the last 15 years that I've been doing this, that there is a system that when repeated can get the same result, the relationship that you want. But there's a lot of uh, rocky road in between. <laughs> mm -hmm. So generally, yeah. Demona, what are we talking about when we are talking about dating? Like, I feel like there are lots of different definitions. So what do we mean on a basic level when we talk about like somebody being ready to start dating? Well, in my process, I have like a five-step process. I take everybody through and it works reliably when the person is ready and shows up consistently. So it starts with mindset. And I have my clients get really clear on who they are, what they bring to the table in a relationship, and then what they want. And I'm not talking about must make X number of thousand dollars a year, must have this college degree, must be six foot, I don't know, what is it now, three? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the ladies are looking for. Because those aren't the qualities, ultimately, that end up predicting long-term relationship success. You know, and a lot of my clients have come to me after doing therapy and getting clear on some of those things. Like, we all have our stuff, right? Like, we have the stuff that our parents have told us about who we should match with, who we should date. We have the pressure from them of like, how come you haven't met the person? How come you haven't given me any grandkids? We have all of those voices in our head, plus the experiences that we've been through in past relationships. And I think that there's always an opportunity to start fresh. And this is why I start everything with the mindset so that we can develop a new mindset if we need that to approach dating with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. So can you give us the rest of those steps without sharing too much of your intellectual property? I'm an open book, okay, Dr. Perfect. Joy, and I talk about this, my podcast, Dates and Mates, every week. So perfect. I will give the information freely, okay. but I'll run through the five steps quickly and then whatever you want to dive into a little deeper, we can talk about that. Okay. So the five steps are mindset, sourcing, where you find in dates, screening, how you're deciding if somebody is a good match for you or not. And that could be before you go on the date or once you're on a date, how do you decide if if you want to go out with them for date two, three, four or five? And then there's presentation. How are you showing up on the date? So we've done the mindset work. We know who we're looking for. We know what we bring to the table. How do you bring that forward? And within presentation, it's also like flirting skills because talking about dating skills, I see flirting as a learned skill. And a lot of times, especially over the last couple of years, a lot of folks were not practicing that skill at all. So we get into the strategy of that and of practicing the flirting skills, because when you're practicing the not flirting skills in other areas of your life, those are the skills that get strengthened. And then the last step is 
it's actually the simplest step and it's the one that most people mess up and it's follow through. So how do you keep the conversation going? How do you decide if this is the right person for you, if this is really a relationship that has legs for long-term compatibility? So most of my clients come to me seeking long-term committed relationships. It's been interesting because I've been doing this for a while. It's not always marriage, and I support that. It's not always the traditional, and I support that. But through this process, we get clear on what do you actually want and how do we develop a dating plan that works for you and your specific goals? Mm -hmm. So I think it would be helpful to hear more about, because you've already said that you really don't work with your clients in terms of this list of like, okay, they have to be a certain height, certain grad school education, like all of that stuff that doesn't actually predict long-term success. So what kinds of questions should people be asking themselves about like who they want in a partner? Like how do you get clearer about what might be a good match for you? Well, I like to really drill down into what are your goals for the future and what are your values? I think in my work, those are the two biggest predictors of long-term compatibility. So what path are you traveling in your life? And then what do you believe to be true about the world? And we do all kinds of exercises. We do a lot of visualization. We do our own form of list making. I'm not a big fan of like the checklist, but we do kind of a, a more holistic list. But we really talk about what does that look like and what does it feel like? And I always say to my clients, you may not know looking at this person's picture on a dating app, you may not know that that's your person. But if you get clear on how you want to feel when you're with your partner and you are sitting across from that person and you feel that feeling repeated, then you will know. And he might not look the same way. He might not fit all those lists, th those, those little boxes that you checked on your dating app. But you're going to know when you feel safe, when you feel like this person understands me, this person sees me, this person gets me, and this person wants the same things and wants to build the same life that I want to live. Hmm. Got it. So you've already talked about, you know, we don't necessarily have to just confine ourselves to the five block radius around our homes, right? Like online dating has really opened up the world to us. And so what are some of the reasons why people are pursuing online dating services to kind of find partners? Well, we're doing everything online these days, True. right? I mean, if you're, you're on social media, you're texting, you're buying, like, I get everything shipped to my house. I don't want to go into a store if I don't have to anymore. So when you think about that, just the efficiency of using these technology tools, it's changed our lives, the way that we live our lives dramatically. But it does create additional challenges, right? So I just want people to be aware of how to use the tool effectively. And I, I feel like dating apps often get a bad rap because people are frustrated with dating. And the biggest change that I've seen in the time that I've been doing this is the speed of dating has increased. Like it's become much more like, I don't want to do all these dates. I just want my person to land on my doorstep. And trust me, girl, like if he ain't the FedEx man or pizza delivery man, like it's not going to happen. You have to apply yourself in a different way. And dating apps are one tool that helps us do that. But I think the reality is that like everything has sped up. The speed of communication has sped up. So if you're mad at dating apps, you may actually be mad at texting. You may be mad at social media. And it's just a matter of figuring out which tool, which dating app is going to work best for you and how to use that tool effectively. And so when I look at what has changed the dating landscape since I started? There have been a couple of big shifts, but one was just the smartphone and moving to like when I started online dating, it was it was like desktop. <laughs> it, was, it was full on desktop. It wasn't even laptop. It was full on desktop computer. Like now we can take our app with us and it's become a more social process, kind of the way that dating was out in the wild before, you know, you'd ask your girlfriends like, is he looking at me? Is he cute? <laughs> you know? So now we do that in the app, right? We show our friends who we're matching with and ask their opinions. 
And then the other thing that has shifted is just, I mean, we can't have this conversation without talking about the impact of COVID. And I work with OkCupid as their official dating coach. And we've seen that really throughout the pandemic, dating apps were the only option for a lot of people to stay connected and stay in the dating space. And we've seen, especially for Black women, Black women are having more success online. And on OkCupid, over the last three years, they are getting more matches than any time before in the past three years. It's continued to increase. So that says to me that it is creating a space for everyone, but also for Black women to make connections that maybe weren't available to us or that it definitely had a stigma before. I don't know what your feelings are on dating. Well, I met I my know, husband. I know, on, I know you're married. I but. met my husband <laughs> online too. So I am a huge fan. Yes. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Yes. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah. we're in the know here. But I'm sure for a lot of your listeners, they're like, I don't know, like dating apps, that's for weird people. That's for, <laughs> or that's like what you do when you're desperate. But you and I are desperate, Dr. Joy. <laughs> no, I mean, and, I, and we it are is smart. interesting to me when people, because it feels like technology has like moved so fast that, of course, that's where you're meeting partners. Because like you said, we're doing everything online. And so I think it is sometimes a little shocking to me when I hear, especially much younger people have that same kind of sentiment related to dating apps, because it feels like we're doing everything online. So, of course, this is also where you meet people who are potential daters. I will say I do notice a generational shift. A lot of my younger Dates and Mates listeners that are like, you know, under, let's say under 30, they grew up with technology. They don't even differentiate. It's just dating, Mm -hmm. like dating apps. It's not, oh, I met on a dating app or I met this way. And yet I still sometimes hear from daters of, I'll just go ahead and say my generation and older who still feel like that's not the story that I want to tell my kids. And I don't know. I like to have my kids to tell the story to. They do not care at all how we met. Mm -hmm. This is now kind of going back to the mindset work. Whatever that story is that you're telling yourself about what that means, if you can just let that out of your mind, because the venue doesn't matter, it's once you have the connection, that's really what we're going for. So online dating really today is just dating. Mm -hmm. More from my conversation with Demona after the break. Essence Festival of Culture, presented by Coca-Cola, returns to New Orleans June 30th to July 3rd. All your faves in one amazing weekend. Kevin Hart, Janet Jackson, Nicki Minaj, Jasmine Sullivan, New Edition, The Roots and Friends, featuring Method Man, City Girls, and more are hitting the stage. Plus, you know we're bringing the full Essence experience with community, culture, and connection. It's the reset you've been waiting for. Back online and live. Bringing the heat with the experiences you love, including Essence Beauty Carnival, Essence Wellness House, and more. We've got the cultural something for everyone, including meet and greets, shopping, panel discussions, workshops, and performances. It's the Black Joy for us. Sponsored in part by AT&T, Ford, McDonald's, Target, and United Health Group. Don't miss the Essence Festival of Culture June 30th to July 3rd in New Orleans. Plan your trip and get your tickets now at www.essencefestival.com. Shingles? Oh, boy. My wife did not have a good time. You mean that rash she had? Yeah. She said she'll never forget the pain, the burning. The rash lasted for weeks, and there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Well, actually, there's a vaccine that can prevent shingles. What? What? Yeah, shingles can be prevented. Shingles Shingles can can be be what? what? Prevent it. 50 years or older, talk to your pharmacist today about shingles vaccination. This advertisement is brought to you by GSK. When my family and I travel for vacation, one of our favorite things to do is to visit the local Whole Foods Market to stock up on snacks for our time there. Whole Foods Market works great for us because my youngest has several food allergies that can sometimes make finding snacks a challenge. But the large and varied selection at Whole Foods Market makes that easier. We also love checking out what fruits are currently in season as that can be a great time to try out some new tastes or enjoy our favorites. If you're a fan of cherries, June is when they are at the peak of season. Visiting Whole Foods Market always feels like an adventure because you never know what you'll find. That's because they put a big emphasis on stocking things from local suppliers. 
So fill up on those goodies you find when you see them in the store. Looking for more ways to be well as you enjoy summer fun? Visit WFM.com wellness for more wellness tips. So what are some of the best practices? Like what are some of the things that you are consistently telling your clients about how to do dating online? Ooh, now we're really getting into the fun stuff. <laughs> Girls, get your pen and paper ready or get your digital device to take notes on. First, I tell people the profile is everything, right? And that is your calling card. So like back to my original career as a casting director, the headshot was what got you in the door. Once you get there, you're on your own. But <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I help people throughout this entire process. But that's the most important thing because if you don't have your profile on point, you're not going to get the matches that you want. And you really have to keep in the forefront of your mind that it's about quality and not about quantity. Because when we're talking about these new tools like social media, we think, oh, I need the most likes. <laughs> no, not in dating apps. You don't want the most likes, you want the best likes. And you also have to remember it's a tool. You're programming the tool to work for you. So who you connect with, who you message with, who you pass on, all of those things are part of programming the algorithm. But first, we want to get your profile bringing in the options so that you can start doing the sorting and telling the app how to work for you. And this is my simple formula for a profile. You want to use the three C's. The three C's are color, context, and character. Color that is actually psychological. I'm curious to hear what you think about this. But studies have shown that men are more attracted to the color red. And when we think about red in the natural world, red conditions us to stop and pay attention. So you might want to think about wearing the color red, but even just wearing a bright color or having like, I live in LA, we have this very famous pink selfie wall. You've probably seen it on Instagram. Why is it so popular? Because the color stands out and it draws the eye. So we want to think strategically first, color and then context that's telling your story through your photos. And everybody says, why don't they just read everything that I wrote in my profile? Nobody ever reads. It's just a shortcut. It's a shortcut. And then once you get them in, then they'll read more of your profile. And then character. And character is like showing your personality, showing your sense of humor, showing if you're nerdy. And <laughs> I had a client who she was really into Comic-Con and she had her little Comic-Con cosplay outfit in one of her photos. And that was the thing that got people to say, this isn't just a cute girl. This is someone that I really would want to connect with. And she got so many comments based on that one photo alone that that really drove her dating experience. So basically what you're saying is that before we even get to anything we're writing, we're trying to do a lot of this just through our pictures. Yes. Okay. Of course. Of course. We have to signal that as someone is swiping through, hey, stop, pay attention. And of course, you put your bikini shot in, you're going to get a lot of matches. But I did a profile polish for Shondaland a while ago for their blog. And the woman came to me and she was like, you know, I get a lot of matches, but I haven't had a boyfriend in two years and I don't know what's going on. And I looked, she had bikini shots, she had drinking shots, she had party shots. And I think she was like in her late 20s. And I'm like, what do you want? Well, I want a relationship. I want marriage. And I said, how are you marketing yourself, though? <laughs> You're getting a lot of matches, but they're not specific to you. They're not quality matches. So we revised her profile, focused on the three C's. And then we came back and met again. And she was like, this has been great because I'm not crushed by the number of messages. Like she just had such a high volume of messages before she got overwhelmed. She couldn't even get through them, but they're specific. They're pointing out certain things that they've read in my profile that they've seen in my pictures and the quality of my matches, even though the quantity has decreased, the quality has increased. Mm, I like that. So once we get mm -hmm. our pictures and our set of pictures together, what kinds of things should we be writing then in the narrative section? Like what kinds of things should you share there? Okay. So the narrative section, the about me, it has to 
be infused with a lot of information in a short little paragraph. And so this is where we have to write and rewrite. And what you first put down is probably not going to be ultimately the right profile. So a lot of times people will just start with a preamble. And I can I can strike the first line of most people's dating profiles. It's, I can't believe I'm here. I didn't think I would end up, right? <laughs> it's like an explanation of how I got here. I like to use that real estate very strategically. Start with your headline. Like dating profiles used to have a headline or a username that said a little bit more about what you're about. But that's the first thing people are going to see. So it's okay. You can say like, faith, family, and fun are the things that fuel me. Or, you know, you could say nerdy cosplay girl seeking. I <laughs> See, I can't even do the Comic-Con references because I don't really <laughs> even know enough about that. But you can be really specific here about who you are and really make that paragraph about you. It's the about me. <laughs> it should be about you. A lot of times people will say what they're looking for. And then they haven't really been specific about who they are. And that is the thing that ultimately is getting the person attracted to you and to take the initiative to actually send you a message. So go through and just anything that is extra, go ahead and just strike it out. Just cut it out and get it to the meat of the story. Storytelling is really at the heart of a great profile. And taking somebody on a journey, painting a picture of the life that you live and the things that you want to do. I'll give you a hot tip because as OkCupid's dating expert, I can see all the data of what trends we're seeing and which words are popping on profiles. There are certain words that do very well. So if you use the word music, travel, fun, food, or dog, music, travel, food, or dog, those, for some reason, Dr. Joy, those always do well. But I think it's because it's about our lifestyle or it's aspirational. And when we are using those words, we're usually telling stories that paint a picture of what it would be like to date us. So you mentioned earlier that, you know, because of COVID, you have definitely seen numbers increase in terms of like Black women getting more matches. What are some other trends that you've seen kind of since the pandemic or other things that you've seen perform very well for people in their dating profiles? Well, I'll start with the trends that we've seen since the pandemic. We've seen that people are really more focused on relationships. We thought we might see that after the pandemic, people were just like, like we were saying last summer was going to be hot girl summer, you know, and everybody was going to want to come out of their houses and just let loose. But it seems like really what happened was during the pandemic, people got really clear on what was important to them. And that mindset work that I was talking about really came to the forefront for a lot of people. And it caused us to really figure out how do I want to live my life and where do I want to be even? Obviously, we saw a lot of people that realized that if their job could be virtual and they didn't need to be based in a particular place, that they might want to move back with family or move across country or live internationally. And it just opened up the possibility for people to live the life that they really wanted, when before I think we weren't even really given the space to to ask some of those questions. So we are seeing that people are expanding their distance preferences. Black women have expanded 30% beyond 100 miles, which I think is actually a really wonderful opportunity and really how dating apps should be used most effectively. Because If you go out in your local community, like you kind of know the people you're going to know. But if you can just expand your pool, that can expand your chances exponentially. We also are seeing that people are wanting their relationships really to last. So Black women on OkCupid said that they wanted long-term commitment and they wanted their next relationship to last the rest of their life. 50% said that. 
27% said several years, and only 3% said one night, <laughs> which I think, you know, a lot of people, I don't know what it was like when you were online dating, but a lot of people assumed that like, oh, that's just for hookups, mm-hmm. that's transactional. But we're really seeing at OkCupid that that is not the case at all. Right. What was it like? Tell me. Yeah. I want to tell. Well, I I've been married, <laughs> what, like 10 years now? So, I mean, so... I don't know, we may have been online. Well, you've been with your husband for 15 years, so a little longer. But yeah, I mean, I definitely didn't see it as an online hookup kind of thing because that's not what I was looking for, though I'm sure you can use them that way, right? Like Mm -hmm. you can kind of get whatever it is that you're looking for. Now, I definitely feel like because there are more apps available now, I do feel some of them have the, the connotation of being a place where you go to find people that you're interested in hooking up with as opposed to like seriously dating. Mm hmm. Yeah, it really depends on where you are. And also, what kind of functionality do you like? Like, I love that at OkCupid, they have the stacks at the top where you can search based on specific qualities. You can search based on distance. You can search based on new. And I like that over just being on a general swipe app that it's like, whoever comes up, whoever comes up. And you can also, because we have the matching questions, you can search based on what's important to you. And you can even have deal breakers that filter out people that don't match for you. So I like, you know, as a dating coach, I can really get in there and like pull the different levers to get you a better dating pool because it can get exhausting if you're just like, oh, I'm just swiping and swiping and swiping through pictures. I know that that can get exhausting, but that's why I feel like a strategy for how to use dating apps is really important because like we busy. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't have a lot of time to put into making dating a second job for ourselves. So if you can do it more efficiently, then why not maximize your time? <laughs> Right, right, for sure. So, you know, something else that I think often comes of is the safety issue related to online dating, right? Even though, you know, we know there's a safety concern, even if you beat people in the grocery store, right? But for some reason, online dating has this like added safety concern for people. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts around like boundaries and other things people should be setting or keeping in mind as it relates to like taking an interaction online into the offline world. It's a great question. And I work on the Drew Barrymore show and I said to Drew, at one point I was going to write a book called I Could Have Been Dead. (laughs) Just about all of the things that happen in real life, Dr. Joy, like not online dating. When I was uh, single and in these streets, like you didn't know anything. Like I just met you in a bar and I'm like, sure, I'll go in a car with you. So let me just give you my rules for online dating safety (laughs) <laughs> that I tell my clients. But you have to remember there's like an element of risk in any meeting any stranger. But if you meet them in a public place, let's back up. Before you even meet them, I think it's a good idea just to do a basic level Google search. Don't go all Google sleuth on me. Just do like a basic search that just makes sure that this person lines up with what they've told you, that there's nothing crazy that comes up associated with them. If your spidey senses are going off and you're feeling like something doesn't seem right or like they call you at weird times or they can never FaceTime before the date, I'm a big fan of doing a phone call or a FaceTime before you go to the date to do a pre-screen. That will save you a lot of time, a lot of ghosting, a lot of heartache. But then once you get there, meet them in a public place that you're familiar with. Drop a pin and share it with your friends so your friends know and say, girl, I'm going to text you, you know, <laughs> for, say, first of all, text me in an hour if, <laughs> if I haven't texted you so that I can get out of this date if I need to. But if you've done your preparation, you probably won't need it, but it's good to have the safety net. Let them know the information you know about this person and where you're going to be and that you'll text them when you get home safely. And generally, most of the people you meet are not going to be scammers. You're probably not going to meet the Tinder swindler. Like we love those stories because they're so outrageous and unlikely to happen. So if you just follow some basic safety rules, then you can just show up and be comfortable. And then also listening to your intuition, that's going to be your biggest clue if something is not right. Mm -hmm. More from my conversation with Demona 
after the break. Essence Festival of Culture, presented by Coca-Cola, returns to New Orleans June 30th to July 3rd. All your faves in one amazing weekend. Kevin Hart, Janet Jackson, Nicki Minaj, Jasmine Sullivan, New Edition, The Roots and Friends, featuring Method Man, City Girls, and more are hitting the stage. Plus, you know we're bringing the full Essence experience with community, culture, and connection. It's the reset you've been waiting for. Back online and live, bringing the heat with the experiences you love, including Essence Beauty Carnival, Essence Wellness House, and more. We've got the cultural something for everyone, including meet and greets, shopping, panel discussions, workshops, and performances. It's the Black Joy for us. Sponsored in part by AT&T, Ford, McDonald's, Target, and United Health Group. Don't miss the Essence Festival of Culture June 30th to July 3rd in New Orleans. Plan your trip and get your tickets now at www.essencefestival.com. Shingles? Oh boy, my wife did not have a good time. You mean that rash she had? Yeah. She said she'll never forget the pain, the burning, the rash lasted for weeks, and there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Well, actually, there's a vaccine that can prevent shingles. What? what? Yeah, shingles can be prevented. Shingles, shingles can, can be, be what? what? Prevent it. 50 years or older? Talk to your pharmacist today about shingles vaccination. This advertisement is brought to you by GSK. When my family and I travel for vacation... One of our favorite things to do is to visit the local Whole Foods Market to stock up on snacks for our time there. Whole Foods Market works great for us because my youngest has several food allergies that can sometimes make finding snacks a challenge. But the large and varied selection at Whole Foods Market makes that easier. We also love checking out what fruits are currently in season as that can be a great time to try out some new tastes or enjoy our favorites. If you're a fan of cherries, June is when they are at the peak of season. Visiting Whole Foods Market always feels like an adventure because you never know what you'll find. That's because they put a big emphasis on stocking things from local suppliers. So fill up on those goodies you find when you see them in the store. Looking for more ways to be well as you enjoy summer fun? Visit WFM.com wellness for more wellness tips. So, Demona, you know, the other thing that I have been concerned about or I've heard feedback around is the microaggressions and colorism and, frankly, outright racism that often exists when Black women use dating apps. Can you speak a little bit about that? On dating apps, just like anywhere else in the world that we move through, we sometimes are confronted with microaggressions, with colorism, sometimes with outright racism. And... It's important for you to know how you're going to respond to it because you're probably going to encounter it at some point. And each situation would require a different response. So the first question is just to figure out how am I going to respond to this? How do I want to respond to this? If it's something that is egregious and outright racist and something that the dating app should know about, you should definitely report it too many times, both on dating apps and in other spaces, we don't speak up because, look, I get it. Like, sometimes it can be overwhelming and it happens often. And you think, I I don't want to have to be the one sounding the alarm every time. But if you don't say anything and the next person doesn't say anything, then nothing will get done. So I do encourage you, if it's something that is not teachable. It is something that is just offensive or aggressive to go ahead and raise your hand and say something to the app. If it's something where it's a microaggression or it's somebody kind of hiding behind a preference, you might want to get curious about how that person thinks and how they came to that conclusion. And you have a choice. You have an option to ask them clarifying questions or educate them. Say, you might not realize this, but this is an issue. And as someone who dated interracially, I found that a lot of people just were not aware of certain things about Black women, about Black culture. And it wasn't out of a place of malice, but it was out of a place of ignorance. And there's an opportunity there sometimes to educate people. But... That's a lot of responsibility. 
And you can absolutely choose not to deal with that. The important thing is that you take care of yourself emotionally. And if you are feeling hurt by what they said, that you find a safe person that you can share that with who will validate your experience. So many times our experiences with microaggressions, with colorism, with subtle racism, it gets brushed under the table at work with our friends in other circles. And it's real. And it's important that it's named, that it's acknowledged, and that you have a safe person or place to share those feelings. It's also important that you don't then internalize that to mean this is what everyone is doing online. Or because I had this one experience on this one app, all the other people there are like that because that only hurts you. And there are people there who want to connect with you, who want to understand, and that wouldn't make those same choices in the same situation. So it's all up to you. You have a number of options in the way that you want to respond, but the bottom line is you have to take care of yourself emotionally and you have to honor what your experience is. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, Demona, in the research that you've seen from OkCupid, if you've also seen anything around Black women, you already mentioned kind of increasing their radius in terms of who they're dating. Have you also seen people being open to dating people who are not other Black people, right? Because we get a lot of questions and like commentary from our social media community around maybe being interested in dating interracially, but not quite being sure or like, what is that going to be? And so I'm curious to hear if there's been any research or information you found there. I do have research. And I will say, I also encourage my clients to really drill down into the values and goals. And a lot of times we look at certain things as a proxy for other values or goals. So we assume, oh, if they vote the same way that I do, they are the same faith that I do, they must believe the same things. If they're also black, they must be aligned in values. And that is not always true. And if you can figure out what's really actually important, what's underneath, and have an open mind, you never know who might come into your dating circle. I do see from the OkCupid okay data that Black women do really put an emphasis on culture, ethnicity, and race as it relates to their identity. And we can have a conversation about this. It's higher than their Black male counterparts. So 52% of Black women on OkCupid okay say it plays a crucial part in who they are compared to 36% of men. I would love to hear your analysis, <laughs> Dr. Joy, of why, why that is. Because I can also say from the data that I've seen that Black men do date outside their race more than Black women do. I'm not all the way sure why that is, but I agree with you that like just even anecdotally, it definitely feels like more Black men date interracially than typically Black women, though I am seeing an increase in that, right? You know, mm -hmm. so I definitely see more Black women talking about being open to dating other people. And I really appreciated what you said around how sometimes certain things are proxies for our values, right? So because we are both Black, does that mean we have a commitment to family or, you know, faith or spirituality practices are the same when they could be, but not necessarily, right? And so I do think that that's something to keep in mind because I don't know that I've heard that described that way. And I would imagine a lot of community members haven't heard that either. Yeah. I mean, I'm Black and Jewish. So <laughs> a lot of people don't assume that. And I have many different faiths within my family. Like my brother-in-law is married to an Indian woman. My dad is remarried to a Mexican-American woman. And I really feel like my life is enhanced as an American, my life is enhanced by having people of different cultures and different backgrounds in my world. I learn about them. I get to experience. I get to have, I get to have chicken tikka masala on Thanksgiving. That's exciting to me. <laughs> like, I love that. And I do feel like Black women have a burden in our culture on Black women to be like the carriers of culture. And I think some of that 
is passed down from prior generations. And so all I aim to do is to have people get really clear on what is important to you. Is it important to you to have a Black family, to have a Black man, or is it important to you to have someone who supports you in infusing Black culture into your children, in sharing your faith, in being comfortable in celebrating your Black family, even if they are not of the same culture? And it's interesting when we start asking some of these questions. I actually wrote an article for the Washington Post about this back in 2020, June of 2020. You may remember that time. (laughs) (laughs) And one of my friends and colleagues who's a matchmaker had asked a question in a matchmaker dating coach. Is it racist if my client only will date their own race? And I was really surprised to hear some of the answers because most of you know my friends and colleagues were like, no, that's just preference. That's just their preference. That's what they prefer to date. And I said, well, it's kind of the definition of racial bias is to have certain beliefs about people just because of the color of their skin. So I have all of my clients do this process to really get clear on what they actually believe and what's important to them and separate it from what they may have have inherited from their community or from their family. Like if a white client comes to me and says, and a lot of times it's not overt, they'll just only check white. If they, Mm -hmm. you know, on the dating app, you can say what your race is and what race you're looking for. And it's very curious to me when I see that, (laughs) I'll say why. And we'll do this technique. It's actually a business technique, the five whys, and we'll unpack it. Like, well, why is that? Well, why is that? Well, I just never, I never dated anyone black. Well, why? Well, because I didn't know anyone black. Well, why? Well, because there was no one black in my neighborhood. Well, why? (laughs) Well, because, oh, redlining. I mean, usually the answer to all questions is probably racism in America. Right. Right. But the process of uncovering that is very interesting to me. And I got a lot of hate mail, not going to lie. I got a lot of people that were really triggered by what I wrote. But I got a lot of people that said, I never looked at it that way. And these choices that I made, I didn't even realize my preference for someone of my same race or culture. It's not just my own choice. It's not by chance. It is actually a product of the environment that we live in. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Demona, we could spend a lot of time here and we may need to schedule a part two because I have a lot more questions. I don't want to ask that, but I know we're running out of time. And so I want to make <laughs> sure we get into some of these other things. So I have a few lightning round questions that I want to ask you for your hot takes on. So what are the top three online dating red flags that you see? Okay, top three red flags, incomplete profiles. Like if they just have a couple words, Mm, no good. If they have old photos, we all have crisp digital quality cameras in our phones. There's no excuse for an old grainy pixelated photo. And anyone who says that they want something different from what you want, (laughs) you're not going to change them. If you want kids and they say kids maybe someday or no, they really mean that. (laughs) Take them at their word. Mm, Okay. Who pays for the first date? Oh, this is a really complicated question. You asked me this on a lightning round. (sighs) For most people, it is the man pays for the first date. A lot of my Dates and Mates listeners also now, and actually we are seeing in OkCupid, more people are open to dating other genders. So it's a little more complicated. Then I say, whoever asks pays for the date. But we are seeing a major trend in people wanting to split to go Dutch And it doesn't mean what it used to. It used to mean he's not interested or that he's broke. (laughs) And that's no longer what it means. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I know this was a lightning round question. No, that's okay. I had to give you more. (laughs) The final one is, is there a perfect text message response time? So is there a certain amount of time you need to wait? Or is there a certain amount of time at which you've waited too long to respond Uh to a message? 24 hours is the clock I usually put on it. Most texts are sent within 90 seconds. 
So in dating, it's a little bit different. You don't want to be too eager. But if you wait more than 24 hours to respond to someone, you might have missed the boat. Mm, Okay. And then finally, this is not a lightning round, but what are three tips that you would like the listeners to, to take away from your conversation today? Authenticity is everything. And that's really the foundation of what I've been teaching people for the last 15 years, that the more that you bring your authentic self to the table, the better you'll be able to find someone who appreciates everything that you are. Especially as Black women, we get so many messages about what is the standard of beauty and what we need to be to be lovable, dateable, attractive, sexy. And once I was able to set that aside, I was able to meet someone who really saw me and wanted me. And so that's really the foundation of everything that we've talked about is to bring your authentic self to the table and really celebrate that and let that be the magnet that draws the matches to you. That was my first tip. You asked me for more. You asked me for more. On Dates and Mates, I've been talking a lot about empathetic dating. And this is something that I really feel like is missing. I don't have any OkCupid data on it, but it's something I'm really curious about because I feel like as the speed of dating has increased, it's become more transactional and we've forgotten that we are people with feelings and we're dealing with people that we're meeting with feelings. And so I'm really trying to encourage my listeners and clients to bring more empathy to the table. And I know you know a thing or two about that. (laughs) So see what happens. You know, if you bring more empathy, you may receive more empathy in return. Love it. Do you have a third one or are those two perfect? The third one is to also make time to love yourself. And I'm not saying that like in um, (laughs) in a graphic way, but this is something that I've realized a lot of my clients are missing. They do so much for other people. They take care of their family. They take care of people at work. They give so much effort out. And then when we date from a place of like, we're missing something or we haven't really figured out what lights us up, then it always ends up feeling empty. So really take the time. I actually did this with my coach. Before I met my husband, I was working with a life coach and she had me go on these dates with myself. I had to spend three hours by myself and schedule time as if I was scheduling it with another person. And that completely transformed me and helped me figure out really what made me tick, what I enjoyed so that I could then articulate that to possible matches. And I could come from a place of knowledge about myself and not be subject to the whims of whomever I met changing me into what they needed me to be. Mm. I could just be me. I like that. And where can we stay connected with you, Demona? What is your website as well as any social media handles you'd like to share? Well, my website is datesandmates.com. It's also the name of my podcast. And actually at datesandmates.com, I have a free profile starter kit. So if you're like, I liked what Demona had to say about the three C's, but I need a little bit more. It's literally just a free kit that helps you get online quickly and do all of the things to your profile that will bring in the right kind of dates. And then I am on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Demona Hoffman. And if you're looking for a dating app, Check out OkCupid. It's free. (laughs) We love it. We'll be sure to include all of that in our show notes. Thank you so much for the wealth of information today, Damone. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Dr. Joy. I love the work that you do. I've followed the podcast for many years, and it's just an honor to be here and share space with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad Damone was able to share her expertise with us today. To learn more about her or to check out her podcast, be sure to visit the show notes at therapyforblackgirls.com slash session 260. And be sure to text two of your girls right now and tell them to check out the episode. If you're looking for a therapist in your area, be sure to check out our therapist directory at therapyforblackgirls.com slash directory. And if you want to continue digging into this topic or just be in community with other sisters, come on over and join us in the sister circle. It's our cozy corner of the internet designed just for black women. You can join us at community.therapyforblackgirls.com. This episode was produced by Frida Lucas and Elise Ellis, and editing was done by Dennison Bradford. Thank y'all so much for joining me again this week. 
I look forward to continuing this conversation with you all real soon. Take good care. Maui Moisture Vegan Hair Care brand is the moisture expert for the diverse spectrum of curly hair from fine waves to kinky coily. Maui Moisture starts with 100% aloe vera as the first ingredient and blended with other hydrating ingredients to offer a full spectrum of moisture solutions. Maui Moisture is free from silicones, parabens, sulfated surfactants, gluten, synthetic dye, and animal byproducts. Visit tiny.cc forward slash Maui Moisture on Amazon to receive 15% off select Maui Moisture products. Ends June 26, 2022. iHeartRadio and Salesforce.org have teamed up for a second season of their award-winning podcast, Force Multiplier. What if we could change the world one relationship at a time? Listen in as host Baratunde Thurston discusses new ways of collaborating to maximize our impact and solve some of today's biggest problems. Join us and hear from the doers out there, the people and organizations that are working together to tackle everything from climate change to education access to global health. Listen to Force Multiplier on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Ford Motor Company is committed to moving forward together with new all-electric vehicles that offer an efficient and exhilarating driving experience. Don't be last to join us on the road of new electric vehicles as we redefine what electric can do. Ford is going above and beyond to not only create the smartest, most connected EVs and technology, but to make sure that customers are well-educated on how to move forward with electric energy. Some benefits of driving all electric include saving money annually on gas and zero vehicle emissions. Ford customers will also have easy and simple access to charge whether you charge at home with the overnight plug-in Ford Mobile Charger or on the road at one of the 19,500 charging stations of the Blue Oval Charge Network. Journey into the future with Ford's lineup of electric vehicles with many affordable options to choose from. Head over to Ford.com to learn more. Built Ford Proud. 